eight inches in reach to Talmadge Griffin. So most things are in favor of David Tua. In other words, his weight and his experience, but in terms of his height and his reach disadvantage, that's pretty much the way it is for every fight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Trust Stadium here in Waitakere City, New Zealand, where tonight, 72 promotions in association with Cedric Kushner Promotions are proud to present Tour of Duty, 10 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Sponsored by Tua Tua Man, Lion Breweries, The Sunday News, Sky City Auckland, New FM, and TVNZ1. Sanctioned by the New Zealand Professional Boxing Association Incorporated, ring supervisor for this bout, Mr. Carrick Belton. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest will be Jeff Belton, Bob Gibson, and Pat Leonard, and when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action inside the ring, Lance Reville. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions around the world who wish they could be here in New Zealand tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with red. His official weight, 94 kilograms, or 206 and three quarter pounds. He comes to the ring with an excellent professional record consisting of 22 victories, including 14 knockouts with five defeats and three bouts even. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Colorado Springs, Colorado, USA, Please welcome Talmadge Two Guns Griffiths. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with silver. Official weight, 114 kilograms or 251 pounds. His professional record, 42 victories, including 37 knockouts with only three defeats and one draw. From South Auckland, the former IBF Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion, former WBC International Heavyweight Champion, and former number one ranked heavyweight contender in the world, presenting the fighting Kiwi pride of New Zealand to a man, David Tu. All right, so Michael Buffer has set the stage. The crowd is in a frenzy. And this is what we all came to Auckland for, to see the comeback of David Tua. You all know the history, the distractions of his contract problems, but that's all behind him now. Okay, boys, We're ready to go. To change rooms. I'll say once again, obey my command at all time. Touch him up. Good luck to both of Remember the rules. Ten-point must scoring system. No standing eight count. There is a three knockdown rule. The fighter cannot be saved with the bell in any round except the final round when the bell signifies the end of the fight. Only the referee can stop the fight. And in case of an accidental foul, we go to the scorecards after four complete. Here comes David to it. Talmadge Griffiths in the black trunks with the red trim. David with his back to you, standing right in front of him. We're looking for the left hook to see if he can touch this guy up right away here. As David blasts to the body right away, Griffiths tries to hold him off of the jet. Very calm and cool, Mike, is uh, David so far. Well, he's been in against a lot tougher 
and harder punching fighters than Telemans Griffiths, but picking his punches early, and we saw going to the body with the right hand early. That is a typical David Tua move to set up the left hook up high, but breaking him down early, and you see just the leverage he gets on that sort of leaping jab that he does, the sledgehammer jab. David showing some patience here as he waits for the opening against Talmadge Griffiths. Griffiths backs off, tries to stay away from him, tries to keep that jab in his face. Don't like the way that Griffiths is circling to his right. He's got to keep that right hand of his up. We all know about David to his left hook. It's no secret. David built up a good sweat in the dressing room, but there was a lot of time with all of the festivities coming out here, so he's cooled off a bit. Right now, he's just looking for his opportunity to land one big blasting shot. But there's the hand speed of Griffiths. David not panicking whatsoever, just waiting for his opportunity. He's been called a one-dimensional fighter, and with a granite chin and a great left hook, that's all the dimension you need in the heavyweight division. Well, David too is a small windowless house, basically. Yeah, he is. Huge punching power, a fantastic chin. And to be perfectly honest, when you have those assets, it makes you a tremendously difficult prospect unless you are from the absolute top draw. Huge, huge legs on David. Look at the size of his calves. That shows, uh, that shot that we have right there really shows you the size of his calves and our huge thighs. And that's where his punching power comes from. So far, he hasn't exploded yet, but he will. And we see a little bit of what we saw earlier from Tipton Walker. Griffith's not really willing to uh, sit down on his punches. He's really up on his bike. A little bit different from how he said he might fight earlier. He indicated he might go to war with David Tua, which uh, wouldn't have been a good prospect anyway. No, a big mistake that would be, Mike. He's got to try and get David in the later rounds and hope that David is not in the kind of condition that we think that he is uh, uh, actually showing, uh, you know, that he's in fine condition to me so far. You don't see the jaw hanging down. We're only in the first round. David opened up a little bit with that. Griffith shows his hand speed. David just trying to set him up. He's walking one way, faints to the right, back to his left, looking to land the big shot but he's patient here with 26 seconds to go in round number one David hasn't even opened up yet well we only saw the first hint of a left hook there from Tua really measuring his man trying to find the rhythm let's remember David has been out of the ring for two years now so he'll have a little bit of ring rust just taking time to find his range find out where his man is at and gauge his rhythm uh, he's still looking to land the big shot because that's what's his most powerful weapon is and all he has to do is maneuver as the bell ends round one in the corner of david is jim strickland inga tuigamala Billy Stratham and Gus Lamb. Across the way now to Talmadge's corner. Kishna Wade right in there with him. Kevin Lawler, his manager and sponsor, also in the corner with him. By the way, I gave that first round to Griffiths because David really didn't do anything. All right, here we go. This is round number two. Scheduled for 10 rounds, heavyweight division. It's the comeback of David Tua. Let's see if David has warmed up enough to open up here now, Mike. Well, already it's gone a lot further than people thought it might. To be honest, it's not necessarily a bad thing for David to do a couple of rounds. Well, I bet on a first round knockout. I've already lost. <laughs> I have a lot of faith in David, though, before this is over. There'll be a knockout, folks. Don't you worry. I suspect the first really serious punch that he lands. And we've seen it against uh, bigger and better fighters than Telematch Griffiths. You know what One I love punch about... knockout. Sorry, Mike. You know what I love about this, though, is the anticipation when it's coming. And, you know, all through the call of the, even the Lennox Lewis fight, I was waiting and waiting and hoping that night. But here, I can almost feel it in my bones tonight in this uh, exciting crowd here at Trust Stadium. My Thackeray. Griffith doing a good job so far. Just uh, keeping his distance. And that honestly is the way he's got to fight him. It's not exciting yet. It'll get exciting when David decides to open up. But uh, mind you, folks, David Tour is dictating what he wants to do. He's trying to maneuver this guy and get in position to land the shot. 
He can be conservative about how many punches he throws because he doesn't need to outbox this guy. He needs to knock him out. Notice Griffith's right hand just drops a little low from time to time. David Tua may have an opportunity, particularly if he throws throws a jab, fakes the jab, and then comes around with the left hook, which is a very, very useful Tua combination. And if Griffith isn't quick enough, he will get clouted by the big powerhouse left hook of the flying Samoan. I'm surprised that David hasn't hit him with the body, at least to let him feel the power, you know, to take some of the spirit out of him, take some of the heart out of uh, Talmadge Griffiths. David hasn't done that. He hasn't gone to the body at all. In fact, he hasn't done much of anything so far. Waiting, waiting, waiting. There's the left hook, but that was kind of a powering left hook from David. As Griffiths' jab was a powering jab, and as I expected, David can walk right through that jab anytime he wants. David should blast a couple of shots in the body. There's the left hook upstairs, but it doesn't catch it up in the jaw of Griffiths. Caught Griffiths just moving away there on the angle. He wouldn't want to be drifting into it or even standing stationary. Just like to see David perhaps go to work with that right hand to the body and then coming upstairs. Make no mistake about it, the Talmadge Griffiths is in a survival mode, and that's the way he should fight this guy. He doesn't want to mix with David. He wants to stay out here. Never wants to enter the kill zone unless he's throwing, and then he better get out of there. And he's fighting a perfect fight so far because he's winning the fight. He won the first round based on activity, and he's winning the second round based on activity. Well, the book on David Tua has always been the same. It, it's no secret. David can be beaten and frustrated if you keep him on the outside, but very, very few fighters have been able to do that. And Griffiths won't be able to keep him on the outside. When David dictates it's time to mix it up and he wants to go, he'll be able to come right through that jab. The bell ends the second round. On my scorecard now, Mike, I've got Griffiths winning the first two rounds just based on activity. Yeah, I think you're right. If we head into the replays from the second round. There we see a, a, a sharp little left hook, a turning left hook from David Tua. And he can throw it. He's got such quick, quick twitch fibers that it's tremendous power and tremendous speed. We're coming up to round three. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Mike Engove. Hope you're enjoying it. David Tua hasn't opened up yet. And Talmadge Griffith is fighting exactly the way he should. If he has any shot of beating David Tua, he's got to fight exactly the way he's fighting. It's his fight now. He's dictating the way he wants it to go. And now he opens up a little bit more with the right hand. David trying to close the gap, trying to get in there. It's not necessarily a bad thing for David if Griffiths does start to open up. If Griffith starts to get brave and stand there and trade with Tua, he will come off second best. Oh, for sure. For sure. But at some stage, I mean, if he wants to win the fight, he's got to throw some shots. He's got to close the gap. And that could be lethal for him at the same time. Right now, Griffith is just flat outboxing David Tua. But a lot of guys have been able to do this. Well, tactics are all well and good, and outboxing someone's all well and good until he get hit and starched. David trying to cut him off, trying to force him into the corner, but Griffiths able to box around him, moves around to his right. He's fighting a perfect fight right now is Griffiths. It's exactly what he wants to do. A bit more urgency from Tua there. He's just moving a little bit more actively to cut off the ring, a little bit more proactive, bridging the gap, a bit more speed of feet from David. David's sneaking in on him right now. It's very subtle, but he's sneaking in. You can see the way he's moving his head, that he has more of an adrenaline flow. There's the left hook. He let it fly that time. Just caught a piece of the nostril of Griffiths. David wants to throw the right hand now. He's been working a lot on that, but we haven't seen it yet. No body shot so far by Tua. We're in the third round. Tua stalking Griffiths. Griffiths fighting the perfect fight to this point, holding off the big, powerful Samoan, fighting out of Auckland, New Zealand. David once ranked number one in the world. Many feel he can be world champ, including myself. There's the left hook, and it caught Griffiths that time. Didn't shake him, but it caught him. And that was just a little flick of Tua's wrist. Not a huge amount of leverage on that punch, but you can see the power of the man. And again, Tua coming off the jab with the left hook. 
Like jabbing, to, jabbing sorry, to Mike. the chest and then coming upstairs with the left hook. Like to see uh, David come back with a right hand behind that left hook. So he's not totally one-dimensional. And I know he's been working on the right hand in training. But right now he goes down to the body. And that, I think, is a good move on David. David closing the gap a bit more. He's picking up the pace a little bit more. Talmadge continues to hold him off of the jab. Nice stiff jab by David to it. Snaps the head back of Talmadge Griffiths. You saw that got Griffiths' attention immediately. The power of the sledgehammer jab from David Tua giving Griffiths something to think about. David can punch with his right hand. He is a big puncher off both hands. It's just his leverage tends to set himself for the left hook, but when he does throw the right hand, he becomes twice the fighter. Well, he just threw his first right hand of the fight, caught a bit of the elbow of Griffiths, but he threw it with real bad intentions, and he needs to do that more. He's going to bang the body of Griffiths a couple of times, and those hands will come down as his elbows will try to protect his body. But David right now is doing pretty much what he wants as the bell ends round number three. Looking at the replay there, David Tua just slipping the left jab, slipping the jab of Griffiths, coming back with the left hook, and there we saw the second left hook just catching Griffiths on the point of his chin. Now we drop into the corner of David Tua. We're all set for round number four. This is a place where I didn't expect this to be. But that's the way David Tua wants to fight this fight. Evidently, he wants to get a little bit of work, testing the man, see what he can do with Talmadge Griffiths. Griffiths, I have out in front by one round right now. I gave him the first two rounds. I gave David Tua the third round. So Griffiths is leading after three. Just like to see David just slide across with his right foot a little bit more. Leverage, throw the right hand and set up the left hook. Now there's no question about the power and the concern for the power that Griffiths has. David trying to maneuver him in a position to blast him to the body with the right hand and land that left hook. And David again, you can see the movement in his upper body and in his head that he wants to kind of pick up the pace. Loads up the left hand and that time he threw the right hand behind it and cut a good part of the body of Griffiths. Well that was good work from Tua, didn't just throw the single punch. Came back with the right hand, and that's really the trick for David Tua. Has to throw in, in volleys. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice uh, switch up, uh, something I haven't seen. There's the left hook again, backs off Griffiths. So David wants to pick it up here in round four. And you know, when you see his head moving back and forth, Larry Holmes is a guy that fought like that too. Start seeing that head move back and forth. You know he wanted to pick up the pace. That's the feeling I get in the eyes of David Tua. There's just the, the, the sense of inevitability about this fight. David Tua seems to be controlling the rhythm, controlling the action. And just when he wants to pick it up, he can hurt Griffiths. Well, Griffiths is not doing the boxing he did in the first two rounds. He really looks like a uh, kind of a deer in headlights right now. He doesn't want to get clipped by the heavy shot of David Tua. And see, now he's making a mistake. He flattens out his feet. Now he throws the punch and gets David back out of there. But he cannot allow David to back him into the ropes and stop. As soon as he feels those ropes on his back, he better slide down the ropes because it is just a matter of time before Tua catches him. There's the left hook. And he's back it. up against the ropes again. David touches him up with the left hand. Just measuring with the left hand. He's not really planning the jab. He wants to throw the right behind it. He's closing the gap. He misses with the left hook that time. David's missed the left hook now on three occasions in this fight. I'd like to see him just string on the right hand behind the left hook because Talmadge Griffiths is just pulling his head back out of the way. If David could follow up with the right hand and then, then his own left hook to follow that, he could actually catch Griffiths. Mike, when you get in there at the end of the fight, you're going to interview David. Should he knock him out? Ask him if his fight style was to just get some work in and test and, and maneuver him around. I'd be interested to know that because he's fighting like a, a guy that wants to pick up the pace now, but it, almost like he was toying with him like a, 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 a cat with a mouse in the first couple of rounds. Caught, start, him, caught a good piece of him that time. You start to see Tua just moving his head a little more, slipping under and countering with the hook. When David Tua starts to move like that, you know he's beginning to get set. 
Notice that Griffiths is not planning the jab anymore. David's making him miss, and David is getting more and more accurate with his shots. And it's the bell ending the fourth round. That's a good tour round. Here we look, David Tua just swinging wildly with the left hook. Griffiths just pulling his head back out of the way, doubling up with the jab, following with the left hook, David Tua catching a piece of Telematch Griffiths. And again, just catching him drifting away rather than full on into the punch. This Griffiths corner, you see him with the end swell of the right eye. So that left hook is beginning to take some sort of toll. Nobody's been down so far. Nobody really shaking. Here we go, round five, Trust Stadium, Waitakere City and West Auckland, New Zealand. The Colonel Bob Sheridan with Mike Engove. Our principal is, of course, David Tua from right here in New Zealand via Samoa against the American Talmadge Griffiths, a journeyman fighter who's hanging in there through four. We're in the fifth round. Talmadge trying to get his jab out there. It's not an effective jab because it's not holding David Tua off. Tua loads up the right hand, crushes to the left side of the cheek of Griffiths. That caught a piece of him. Nice piece of him, Mike. Nice work from Griffiths to get out of the corner, though, but certainly David Tua through the right hand, just still not quite leveraging it right. He's a little bit flat-footed on his heel. And again, you notice Griffiths, instead of stepping up into his jab, he's jabbing and backing off. That's a defensive jab. That's not an offensive jab where he's trying to set up his right hand behind it. David knows that. He wants to come right through that jab. And also, I get the feeling in my mind that David's had enough of messing around with this guy. He'd like to finish him off here. There's the uppercut. There's oh, the left there hook. He's them. got him staggered. He's got him staggered just a bit. The right hand. Griffiths tries to fight back. Is it a mistake? I don't know. He gets away that time. Oh, he was certainly wobbled, Telemans Griffiths. He has felt the power of David Tua for the first time. And there he doubles up again with the left hook. All right, David now wants to finish him off here in the fifth round. He's had enough of mucking around with this guy. Let's see if he can do it. There's the left hook. Crunches to the right side of the skull again of Griffiths. But Griffiths stands in there, making the mistake of putting the back to the ropes. Here comes David in to try to finish him off. Where's the right hand, David? He doesn't let it fly. He lets Griffiths off the hook. Has the left hook. Right hand behind it. David's all over him. He wants to finish him and can't catch up with him. Well, David's just getting a little frustrated. He knows he's got a piece of him. He just needs to set his feet a little bit better. Despite some of the patience he had earlier, Griffiths still pouring away with the jab. But David's power did stagger him here early in the fifth round. David hasn't been able to catch him real cleanly since, but he's turned it up a notch. You know, he wants to finish him here. Tua coming forward, pouring to set up the right hand or that left hook again. Talmadge almost desperately backing up. There's the left hook again, but it sails across the nose of Griffiths without getting a piece of it. David bounces forward this time, trying to set up another power shot. And Griffiths just getting a little bit confident in, in, inside there. Even though he's still backing off, he's turning to her quite often, which isn't a bad tactic. Turning a big man and a man who's a little less mobile. Well, that's a, that's a good point, Mike. He should be trying to turn David in, in a guy that's not very mobile. But on the other hand, with this guy and the power that David has, he's just got to fight the defensive fight he's fighting and every once in a while try to open up a bit. But David's coming right through the jab because he's throwing it defensively is Griffiths. David paused with his right hand there. If he's going to throw it, he's going to let it fly. He, he is there for the right hand too. He's slightly lazy on that jab. Like to see David throw it. Of course, we've been asking for that for a long time. The bell ends the fifth round. That's the best round for David Tua. Fifth round was a good round for David Tua. There we see him just backing him up, faking with the left uppercut, clipping him with the left hook. Griffith's hands all of a sudden come up high. He's felt the power. The right hand over the top. And there we see Griffiths again clipped over the air with the left hook of David Tua. And just uh, David just getting a little bit frustrating there. Just losing his balance as he chased Griffith across the ring.
David with a new spirituality desire. Kevin Barry did the job bringing him to the point in his career where he became number one. And now he's turned to his family to take him the rest of the way home in his quest for the heavyweight championship of the world. This is round six. I get the idea that any time David wants to finish it, he can do it now. And he's up on his toes. He wants to chase this guy down. He'd like to finish it. I thought he wanted to finish him off in the fifth the way he was moving. But he may try to do it here in the sixth. He's tired of fooling with him anyway, Mike. Well, certainly he knows he's got to get his man out of there now. If there was any plans on going some rounds, he's got enough ring time and he's got the rhythm. He just needs to put him away. Well, he's maneuvering Griffiths left and right the way he wants him. Once he gets him in position, I hope he throws a combination of punches. The left hand and the right hand behind it. Oh, did he ever load up a right hand that time? So there is a right hand in his arsenal. Didn't nail him, but he threw it. Well, I think David threw the kitchen sink, the bath, and probably the lounge suite as well into that one. You're not talking about knocking a man up. You're talking about taking the guy's head off if he lands that shot. The problem, of course, is the short arms and the lack of height for David. Don't forget, Griffiths has eight inches in reach advantage, but David comes right through it. But that's not unusual for David Tua. Most of his opponents are taller and have a big reach advantage. I think one of the few fighters he has fought at his own height is... Uh... Griffith's current trainer, Krishna Wainwright, and uh, Krishna Wainwright at about 5'10", with a similar height to David Tua. Of course, the big fight that everyone would love to see is Mike Tyson and David Tua, same height, and both powerful punches. And that they say be worth about $25 million, 12 for each guy. Well, I wouldn't mind seeing that myself. Certainly wouldn't be any room, it'd be a fight in the phone box, I'd say. But right now, we're in round number six, a place many, many people, including myself, didn't expect it to be. David Tua is in command right now, but Griffith, I thought, won the first two rounds of the fight before David decided to open up a little bit in the third. Then he staggered Griffiths in the fifth round, and not a lot of action from David here in round number six. And we just saw a little sign of David Tua on the inside. He rolled under the punch and bumped him off with his left shoulder. I'd like to see him do a little bit more of that to create room. Wild right hand to the body there from Tua. Needs to follow it up with the left hook upstairs. David having difficulty landing the jab with authority, but David makes a living on power shots. He's got the adrenaline flow going now, and tell by the head movement again. Nice foot movement. You know, one thing I'm noticing here in the sixth round that I noticed in a lot of David's previous fights, oh, David got rocked by a pretty good shot by Grimace there, right hand followed by a left hook, is David is not sucking wind. You notice his jaw's not down. He's breathing heavily all right, but he is in better physical condition than I've seen him in many of his fights. Well, certainly, certainly David's always carried power into the 11th and 12th round, as we've seen from his knockouts of Maskayev and Eisen Rite. He carries power, he carries that uh, anaerobic power right through to the latter rounds, but this is only a 10 round fight. He needs to get to work now. We see Griffiths as we come to the end of that round, just getting a little confident. That was Griffiths' best round since the second round. The bell ends the sixth. Um, here we have a look at David. Just setting up now, just setting up Griffiths for something. And there we go, the kitchen sink, the bath, and probably the car as well. And a nice right hand left hook that momentarily looked like it wobbled David Tua from Griffiths. I've got it scored at the six rounds, 58-57. I scored that last round even. I don't like even rounds. I thought Tua was winning the round, but then Griffiths staggered him, so I had to give him the round. As we head into the seventh round, we heard Krishna Wainwright saying to Griffiths, you got to move, man. Move, move, move. And that's the book on David Tui. He has to keep moving as soon as he stops. He becomes a target. David trying to pick up the pace now. You see how quick he is on his feet right now. He doesn't want to drag this thing into the eighth, ninth, and tenth round. He wants to take this guy out soon. And he really needs to to make his impression on the world scene. He's got to try to finish this guy off now. The jab won't hold him off. David can come right through that. 
but I think he needs to blast some more shots to the body, soften Griffiths up a little bit more, and then try to finish him off. We just see David just a little bit off balance, probably signs of being out of the ring for a little while. Just on occasion, he's caught off balance and not in a position to throw a counter shot. He's making Griffiths miss on occasion, but really when he does that, he needs to come back with something. And balance, you're right, Mike, is so key in every sport, not just boxing. In every sport, balance is a big key. And David, when he throws his left hook with a lot of power, in the case tonight, his right hand, you saw him fall forward and almost go through the ropes there a couple of rounds ago. But David, he's fooling around with this jab of Griffiths. He should just come right through it. And he's got a blast to the body. David's been short with his jab. He, he, he can't seem to out-jab this guy because he does have an eight-inch advantage in reach. And Griffiths is jabbing and moving. But it doesn't measure well for David, by the way, you know, to be just doing so-so against a journeyman fighter. He, well, I want to see him blast him out. Okay. And I'm sure he wants to. Yeah, perhaps this is where we're just starting to see, although David's still controlling the rhythm of the fight, just the lack of quality sparring that he has had. And he got clipped by a right hand as he missed with the left hook on the way in there. That's the danger of David against real good boxers. He had that problem, uh, you know, when he fought against Chris Bird. Although Bird has, you know, no power, so he didn't hurt David. But that's how David lost that fight, because he'd throw his shots and then get counted. This guy is not in the league with Chris Bird at all, but he's getting away with a lot against David. David's letting him off the hook uh, on occasion here. Griffiths moving, moving right, then moving left. Nice sledgehammer jab there again from Tua. That's the first good jab that David's landed, and I'd like to see him do that more, and he needs to do that. And he throws the right hand of the body, caught a pretty good piece of Griffith's body that time. You notice Griffith's left elbow comes into his body after David whacked him that time. David wants to load up a power shot right here. You can see it coming. Just He's planting his feet, getting his legs ready, getting ready to turn his hip over. There's the left hook, the power shot. Makes a miss. Now, there's an opportunity there when a guy throws a right-hand power shot to counter him with the left hook, but David wasn't in position to do that. It's easy from down here to pick that up, and it's much harder when the guy's in front of you. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes it's easier talking about it than doing it. Oh, and there we see the left hook. Left hook, right, right, right hand. hand catches him. He's got him in trouble now. Griffith's trying to hang on. Here's David with all the power, trying to finish him up. How is Griffith stood up against the power shots? Left hand, right hand. He was ready to go at the bell, but at no time did David drop him. He staggered him, and he staggers towards his corner. That's what the crowd came to see. Here we come as we look towards the end of that round. David Tua has been tracking him down for so long. The sledgehammer jab doubling up on it. And here we see again coming over the top. We'll have the left hook there. Right hand just missing. Griffiths turning him into the corner. And the right hand, the first right hand of the fight. Left hook. Left hook again. That's the one that did the damage in the right hand. And he's really wondering where his legs are right now. David Tua just trying to create some room. Griffiths fighting in there, every ounce of his being trying to keep him up as we look towards David, David's corner and into a Gamala. Well, now David's going to jump right on this guy. One minute isn't enough to recover from those heavy blows in the last 20 seconds of the seventh round. Here we go to round eight. Now, has David got enough gas left in his tank to finish this guy off abruptly here in the eighth round? because Griffiths is definitely in survival mode right now. Backing off, backing off. He's not even throwing out the jab. Now he paused with the jab, continues to back off. David wants to put some pressure on him and try to finish him off right here if he possibly can. Well, that was the thing earlier. I said Griffiths is just starting to grow in confidence, and sometimes when that happens, you get careless. He got careless and got clipped. But David just not really jumping on him. I'd like to see him do a little bit more here. Well, he's showing a bit of patience to me here. He, he, he may know in his own mind, look, I can take this guy anytime I want now. So he wants to line him up for the big, powerful shot. But you know something, Mike? With the good left hooks in that last round, it was the right hand that really hurt Grivas. But uh, luckily for Grivas, the bell really saved the, the effort of David Tour because he was going out. Well, I think uh, he was pretty pleased to hear the bell, the ringside bell, rather than the bells ringing in his head because he was certainly clipped and wobbled. And still, he's uh, got a little bit of the deer in the headlights look even now. David Tua slaps away the outstretched right hand of Griffiths. David is filled with confidence himself. Has a nice That's half a uppercut. uppercut, a half uppercut inside. He caught him with that shot and bounced the head back. 
And I think Griffiths even there, we just saw his knees buckle momentarily. That's the power of Tua, starting to track his man down. That came from a new point, I like that. It kind of came from his hip with the uppercut motion instead of the strict left hook. And David has got to do more of that too, Mike. He's got to throw those punches. There's a right hand lead, I like that. That can be very effective for David when he puts that in his arsenal. Here's a mistake being made by Griffiths. He's getting brave now. He wants to exchange with David. That's suicidal for a fighter to exchange with him here. I know he wants to win the fight, and he's got to land some punches to do it, but he's got to do it by jabbing and boxing and not exchanging on the inside with David. We're well, talking to Krishna Rainwright before the fight. That was his worry that uh, two guns Griffiths would actually follow his natural instincts, which is to blast away with both hands rather than stick to the plan. And we may be seeing that once he gets hit, once he gets a little bit of the adrenaline flowing, he wants to get in there and mix it. Let me tell you something, this is a big step up in class for Griffiths. He hasn't fought anybody in the caliber of David Tour, and he's not making a bad show of himself at all. Don't forget, he's 22-5 and five in the heavyweight division, but hasn't fought any really, really good heavyweights like a David Tour, and he doesn't look too bad. He's hanging in there. He's only trailing in my scorecard by a couple of points here, and we're in the eighth round already in a scheduled 10-round affair. David a little frustrated about the fact he can't catch up with the guy right now. He's trying to hunt him down. Griffith fighting exactly the way he should, trying to hold Tua off. Tua comes forward, stalks his man. There's the right hand, caught him on the shoulder though. Just a little bit wide on the punches, David Tua. Just gives Griffiths enough time to see the shots, turn his shoulder away from them, just to take the sting out of the power. And the bell ends the eighth round. Well, here we see Tua just going with the left hook and the uppercut that momentarily buckled Griffith's knees. But he came back well from that. And the right hand lead from Tua catching Griffiths, drifting into the right hand. So Griffiths was staggered in the fifth. He rocked Tour in the sixth, then he was staggering himself with a three-punch combination of hooks and right hands in the seventh, and then that uppercut that Mike just described for you in the eighth, and Tua is out in front of this fight 78-75. But believe me, David doesn't want to win this by unanimous decision. He wants to knock this journeyman fighter out. For Griffiths, this is a turning point in his career if he could go the distance with David Tua. There's no disgrace for him to go 22-6 and six with a 10-round loss to David Tua, and that may be his mindset right now. Certainly he'll secure himself a couple more paydays as the man who went the distance with Tua, but that's yet to happen yet. And a left hook that did start to land cleanly there just went over the top of the glove. Now I get a sense of urgency again from David. I see his head moving. I see him trying to work on the inside. I see him walking through the jab of Griffiths, whose jab is now and has been for the past couple of rounds a very defensive jab. And David looking to land power shots. He throws kind of a tentative right hand, but there was nothing tentative about the left hand. It just didn't catch him flush. And Griffiths, as a matter of fact, counted right back with a right hand of his own. Now look at Griffiths getting brave as he pushed door off. Digging, digging two-handed to the body, but with David throwing the right hand, it set up the left hook. Another significant factor is the conditioning of Tua. He's not sucking wind in the ninth round. He's breathing comfortably. He's a little gassed, but there's a lot of power here in the late rounds of David Tua. He's in good physical condition. His timing is just slightly off, and that could be the two-year layoff. I didn't think it would make any difference for David because of him being, you know, the dimensional fighter that he is with the left hook. I've seen more right hands, which I like. But I, I just expect that he'd eat up this journeyman fighter who has got brave as this fight has gone on. Kind of like Leon Spinks against Muhammad Ali in the first fight. Well, we talked about that in the press conference as well. Leon Spinks in that first fight. He had, oh, and there's a the left hook. I think that wobbled Griffiths momentarily there. He certainly looked starry-eyed. Yeah, he's starry-eyed all right, and his heels are very heavy. David may have caught a bigger piece of him than we thought there, Mike. He looks very heavy in the heels right now. His knees seem to be all right. He's hanging on uh, to David. 
Lance Revel really hasn't had to do too much uh, to separate these guys. They've been winging away pretty good. By the way, this is a very entertaining heavyweight fight. A very good pace, a fast pace, and that again goes to the credit of the conditioning of David Tua, which is noticeable from my standpoint watching David this fight. That time, Griffiths blocked the left hook of David. As I said earlier, if Griffiths starts to get tired and try and fight on the inside, that may not be to his advantage against David Tua. His range will go and he opens himself up to make a mistake. The problem is he can't, fighting defensively like this, win the rounds. He's only three points behind. He needs to win this round, and he's not going to win this round because David's landed too many shots. There's a nice stiff jab by David. Where's the right hand behind it, though, David? you got to think of punches and bunches, and David, uh, you know, throws an awful lot of single punches throughout the course of his career. Tonight, when he threw the left hand and then the right hand behind it, it was a right hand that really staggered Griffiths back in the uh, seventh round and, as well as in the fifth round. I think David is just starting to eat him up a little bit. The thing about David that you often don't realize, he does throw hard upstairs, but downstairs, if you come to the end of that round, he also has some sting. So nine is in the book. We had an end of round nine, not expecting it to go that far. That left hook clipped Griffiths more than we thought, and another one around the ear of Griffiths. And the left hook right hand, again, when David throws in volleys, he's more effective. I think Griffith has shown, uh, shown extraordinary conditioning for this fight. He's been able to gobble up some of the best power shots of David. I don't know what that tells us about David's power. Has he lost any power? I don't think so, really. I just uh, think that maybe the layoff, you talk about ring rust. I didn't expect that to happen, but there might be a little bit of ring rust. That's why his uh, promoter, Cedric Kusha, says I want to get him right back in 90 days again. Here we come, the 10th and final round. The Colonel Bob Sheridan with Mike Engo. Glad that you're going to be with us. We're at Trust Stadium and Waitakere. You're watching TV and Zed. And now there is a sense of urgency. David wants to knock this man out. Well, in front of his home crowd, he doesn't want to see it go the distance. David Tua is not a fighter who wins fights by unanimous decision. Here He's comes a the loaded up right hand, out. the left hook. He's right behind the left hook again. There's the right hand. He wants to finish him off. There is that sense of urgency, and Griffiths has a sense of bravado, which is a mistake. He should box and stay away from this guy. He thinks he can still win this on the scorecards. And he can't. David's got the fight won, but he wants to knock him up. As Griffiths trying to make a fight of it in the closing frame. David starting to do some nice work to the body downstairs. He, this is where we talked about David starting to punch in combinations, and he does look good when he does that. And, and again, the important factor, even if it does go the distance, is his conditioning into the 10th round of this fight. I mean, his mouth isn't hanging open like I've seen it before. He's tired, sure, but not to the amount of fatigue that I've seen him before. There's a lot of power left in David Tour. There he is urgently throwing the left hook. He's trying to finish this fight and turn the lights out. And he just can't quite catch this Griffith. To Griffith's credit. David closes in, plants him into the corner. Look for the left hook, folks. The right hand of the body. There haven't been enough body shots thrown by David. That's one thing tonight. That's always been his strength as a fighter, too, the way he wears a fighter down, dropping the hands with the... Oh, and there's a left hook on the inside coming off the body shot, just a as very, we were talking about it. Yeah, Mike, a very good right-hand body shot in there. This guy is in magnificent condition. Now he's making a mistake of mixing with Dave. David goes after him, hunts him down. He's trying to finish him off with everything he has. He wants to knock this man out. A lot of credit is going to go to Griffiths standing in there with his big powerful puncher. Just get rocked by right hand. There's the uppercut by Tua. He backs him off, loads up the right hand, the left hook. David Look starting to go to work, another right uppercut up top. Oh, there's a real sense of urgency for him to turn the lights out. Griffiths is trying to hang in there as best he can. He's still not hanging on him. He really should grab David right now. Loads up the right hand, oh, cracks, him. With the right hand. cracks him with a shot, big left hook, David is trying to finish it off, look at this, talk about conditioning, Rebels is ready to go, Do is in him with everything, Lance Rebels should move in and stop the fight, one minute, two more shots, that's it, it's all over, it's a 10th round technical knockout victory for David Tour.
He did it. What do you want to do? Mike, how about that? David Tua, the final round of the fight. Have we seen this before from Tua or what? And in front of his home crowd, to be honest, Bob Sheridan, that's as good a result as we could want from David Tua. Even though he didn't look sharp, he got some rounds in. Hey, don't forget to ask him now, did he want to go the rounds? Did he want to go the rounds? I want to know that myself. Well, what a finish there from David Tua. I've got a feel for Telemaps Griffiths did so well for so long. Only 26 seconds left in the fight. But he showed a lot of guts and determination, and he did take some big shots. A brilliant finish for David Tua. He wanted to knock him out in the 10th round, and he did. When he turned it up to the full steam, he was able to do it. And remember what I said about his conditioning, Mike? He was in great shape, fine shape, as good a shape as I've seen. All right, Michael Buffer standing by. We've got to make it official. So without further ado, let's go to the classiest ring announcer of them all, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at two minutes, 45 seconds of the 10th and final round. The winner by TKO victory, he as the fight went on, but it ended in a brilliant victory for David Tour. It came like a bolt out of the blue. At about 2.45 of the 10th and final round, when Tua decided to turn the lights out, he did it. Ladies and Lance and Revel didn't want him to get hurt. for the game effort for this young man from Colorado Springs, Colorado, USA, Talmadge Griffiths. An extraordinary effort by Talmadge Griffiths whose stock in the heavyweight division has gone way up tonight. You're going to see Talmadge Griffiths more. If he can last into the 10th round with a big banger like David Tua, Talmadge Griffiths, who moved up in class tonight to fight David Tua, will get an opportunity against more ranked heavyweights, which I'm quite certain will get him ranked. That was a brilliant effort by Talmadge Griffiths against one of the heaviest bangers in the entire sport of boxing. Now, my man, Mike Engove, has gone in there, and momentarily, he will have David Tua. And here we go. Here's Mike with David. Congratulations on your fight tonight. Two years out of the ring. It's been a long time. How does it feel to be knocking people out again? Oh, glory to God for this great victory. Brother, it's been two years, but it's like riding a bike again. You know, uh, you'll fall off it, but, you know, you got to get back on it and have another go. It looked like for a while there you were having trouble tracking him down. Do you feel any ring rust there? He certainly had his running shoes on for 10 rounds. Well, I have to give it up to him. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to come out and display my talent. But more importantly, I thank the supporter for coming out. It's been a tough two years, but, you know, people's generosity throughout those tough times, you know, I'm grateful for it. And, of course, what the people want to know is what's next for David Tour? What are the plans? What do you have in mind? Well, today was a very special day. Uh, my, it's my uh, youngest boy's birthday, Nana. Happy birthday, boy. He's seven today. And uh, I thought I was going to finish the seventh round. But anyways, a uh, good victory is better than uh, not having a good victory. Well, congratulations on another late round KO victory to David Tua. We just go over to Cedric Kushner. Mr. David Tua. Ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, I'd like to return all the honor and glory to the Almighty God that uh, even though the brother went down in the 10th round, but he wasn't seriously hurt. So uh, let's give him another round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of uh, my humble small team tour, I'd just like to thank you all for taking the time to come out and support me. You know, this is not a comeback. If anything else, it's continuing my journey and our journey that one day 
We'll bring the title back here. Manuel Lasso. That's David's wife, Abina, there in the green dress. Of course, she's thrilled. A very exciting night for the Tua family and all New Zealanders. And I'm sure you folks watching around the world who may have been tuned in, as I thought, in the first and second round expected knockout. This man, Talmadge Griffiths, remember his name, because you're going to see more of him. His stock went way up in the heavyweight division tonight. A brilliant effort by Griffiths against the heaviest hitter, perhaps still in heavyweight boxing today. David Tua is back. Now we're trying to get an interview with our promoter Cedric Kushner, and momentarily Mike will try to get a hold of Cedric and we'll try to get that interview. All right, Mike, go ahead with Cedric. Here we are talking to Cedric Kushner tonight's promoter, and of course, the new manager for David Tua. What's coming next? A good performance from David tonight. To be honest, he went a few rounds. What are your plans for him in the next few months? Well, I thought I thought it was very good for him to go rounds. I wasn't concerned. I was happy that he went some rounds in actual fact. And uh, I'd like to see him back in the ring in 90 days. Keeping him active? Right, I think definitely. He's had a two-year layoff. It's a very, very difficult thing. If he went two rounds, people would have said Talmadge Griffiths was nothing. Now that he went 10 rounds, people might say, why did he go so long? So it's a very difficult situation. But I think David must be very happy that he went the extra round. OK, well, th thank you to Cedric Kushner. Congratulations on another victory for David Tua and a great promotion. Thank you very much. This is a terrific promotion. All right, let's uh, show you how it all happened here as you see it unfolding. David Tour loading up shots, catches him with the uppercut. This is the beginning of the end. Griffith tries to fight back gamely, but look at the assault in the final round by David Tua. Look at the clean shots. There's about five or six, and you see Lance Revel wants to move in, but he's giving him every opportunity to hang in there. Then one final big right hand it was, not the left hook. The right hand was the final shot that uh, referee Lance Revel saw, and that was enough for him not to allow Talmadge Griffiths, who put up a brilliant battle, not to allow him to get hurt. So it was a brilliant effort again by Griffiths, but even more brilliant for David, who had to go into the 10th round, but was in magnificent condition. Never had that jaw hanging down where he was really gassed and sucking wind. He trained hard, and when he wanted to turn up the notch, I thought he wanted to take him out in the 7th, but there was no question about it in the 10th that he was going for a knockout, and it came with just 15 seconds left in the fight. All right, that's the situation. We want to thank everybody involved here. Murray Needham, our executive producer, Stu Dennison, and the director, Barbara Mitchell. So for Mike Engo and the Colonel Bob Sheridan saying, I hope you enjoyed being with us. Thanks to everybody at TVNZ. A great night.